So here I will provide the definition of two kinds of improper integrals over infinite intervals. Well, infinite intervals can be of different type, of course. And uh, in the former example, we discussed type A. So suppose we know that the definite integral from A to T yeah, for some value A and some value t, which is supposed to be larger than a, fx dx exists. And suppose we know that this integral exists for all t larger than a, then we will choose to, we, we will define the integral from a to infinity fx dx as the limit for t to infinity of the definite integral a to t fx dx. Yeah, so in the former example, a was chosen to be 1 and fx was 1 over x squared. This was a type A improper integral. Well, type B goes the other way. So suppose we know that the definite integrals from t to b, where b is some constant fx dx, exists for all t smaller than b. So this means that f should be defined at least on minus infinity b. And suppose the integral t to b of fx dx exists for all t smaller than b, then we may speak of the integral of minus infinity to b fx dx as uh, as if it were the limit of t to minus infinity of t to b fx dx. So now uh, the lower integration bound goes to minus infinity. And uh, we'll say that the integral, the improper integral converges if the limits exist and we will call it divergent if the limits do not exist. So let's dis discuss an example of the second case of an improper integral. So focus on the following function, fx equals x times e to the power minus x squared. Then we may try to find the integral minus infinity to zero of fx dx. So what we actually try to do is calculate the blue area on the left and on the right hand side in the figure, right? So in red is the graph of the function f and the integral from minus infinity to zero stands for the size of the region that we indicate in blue. And this is defined as the limit for t to minus infinity of the integral from t to zero fx dx. Well, the integral for negative t to zero is the area enclosed here. Well, let's try to find it. Well, we know f, so we substitute f, which is an expression in x. So we get the limit for t to minus infinity of the integral t to zero of x times e to the power minus x squared dx. And uh, the integrals from t to zero are all definite integrals, so we may apply our usually techniques, usual techniques, and the techniques that we're gonna use here is the one that is called substitution. Well, I try to substitute uh, uh, u equals minus x squared, so we bring the integral in the standard form. Yes, so that uh, u equals minus x squared and du equals minus 2x dx. So this is the substitution that we will use here. Then if uh, x ranges from t to 0, then after substitution, t will uh the, the t will go to minus t squared so you will range from minus t squared to zero okay so this is the picture we get the limit we're just going to repeat the limit 
don't get lazy and forget about these limits since the the the, the technique that we use here can only be used in presence of the limit signs so we get a limit for t to minus infinity of minus t squared zero of the function minus a half e to the power u which is the easy function we get after substitution so as a primitive we find minus a half e to the power u within limits integration boundaries minus t squared and zero so we get a limit for t to minus infinity of minus a half e to the power u which is minus a half minus minus a half e to the power minus t squared which is minus a half plus a half e to the power minus t squared but if t goes to minus infinity then the variable term tends to zero so we are left with the integral equal to minus a half so the integral converges basically this is due to the fact that e to the power minus x squared goes to zero much faster than that uh, x goes to minus infinity.